Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an infinite series with reciprocals of numbers. We have 1 minus 1 fourth plus 1 over 7 minus 1 over 10 plus 1 over 13, so on and so forth, where each denominator is 1 more than a multiple of 3. In other words, all the denominators are 1 mod 3. And this is an alternating series where the signs alternate, plus, minus, plus, minus, so on and so forth. You probably know some of these series. For example, there is a very famous one that has odd numbers in the denominator and still alternating. 1 minus 1 third, min plus 1 fifth, minus 1 seventh, so on and so forth. Hopefully, you do know that this is equal to pi over 4. And I probably made a video about it. If I can find it, I'll link it down below. Or if someone can find it well, for me, that would be really cool. All right, great. Anyways, uh, there's a way to do this, and we're going to be using pretty much the same method, even though this one is a little bit more complicated. And you'll see why in a little bit. Let's go ahead and get into the details. And I'm also going to share with you some, you know, variations of this problem, and we'll talk about those as well. So, but anyways, we're going to look at an integral. Now, you might be questioning, like, why do we look at an integral? If you look at the denominators, hopefully... It'll make sense to you because they're three apart, right? Four, seven, ten. So that's a pattern. And to get that pattern, we're going to be using integration because of the power rule. And you'll see this in a little bit. So let's get started. So I'm going to consider the integral. This is a definite integral, by the way. From 0 to 1, the integral of 1 over 1 plus x cubed, which you can write as dx over 1 plus x cubed. Some people are going to write it as 1 over 1 plus x cubed dx. It's the same thing, doesn't matter, okay? Now, to be able to integrate this, we kind of need to do some stuff. But before we get into that, we can also look at it from another angle, which is going to give us our series. So this is actually if x is between 0 and 1, or negative 1 and 1, which is, right, because our integral is definite integral from 0 to 1. So we know the range of our x values. We can get a geometric series from here. For example, what would happen if x satisfied that criteria and you had something like this? This could be written as 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed plus x to the fourth, so on and so forth. And you probably know this, right? If you have a geometric series like 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed, this can be written as 1 over 1 minus r as long as r is between negative 1 and 1 or absolute value of r is less than 1. But in this case, if you replace r with negative r, this also works because negative r is also going to be on that interval, and you're going to be getting the alternations. Negative r, negative r cubed, so on and so forth. You get the idea? This is how I arrive at this. And we're going to do a little bit of hocus pocus or mathematics to this to get the stuff that we want. I do need 1 over 1 over x cubed, 1 over 1 plus x cubed. So can I replace x with x cubed? Absolutely. So now we can replace 1 over 1 plus x cubed with the following. 1 minus x cubed plus x cubed squared, which is x to the 6, x cubed cubed, which is x to the 9, so on and so forth. So this gives us, the in the exponent, multiples of 3. In other words, numbers that are 0 mod 3. In other words, multiples of 3. Cool. How is that helpful? Well... If you integrate by power rule, and you remember the power rule, if you integrate x to the power n dx, that becomes x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus a constant. But we don't care about the constant because this is a definite integral. So you can pretty much forget about it. And notice here that adding 1 to each of these exponents will create numbers that are 1 mod 3. Let's go ahead and find out how that is achieved. So let's go ahead and use the power rule to integrate what's on the right-hand side. We'll deal with the left-hand side later because first we want to see some results. Okay, great. So now, if you integrate 1, that's going to be x. I'm not plugging in 0 or 1 yet. Hold on. x cubed, if you integrate it by the power rule, you're going to get x to the 4th divided by 4. And then x to the 6th will be x to the 7th divided by 7 minus x to the 10th divided by 10. You see the rule is pretty easy. You take the exponent, increase it by 1, and then divide by the new exponent. And if you're going to differentiate it, the rule applies, but it's backwards. Make sense? And you get x to the ninth if you differentiate this. And of course, this goes on forever, dot, dot, dot. Now, this is my integral, 
Again, don't worry about the left-hand side yet. But since this is from 0 to 1, we're going to need to replace x with 1 and x with 0 and subtract those results. But wait a minute. All these terms contain x, x at least 1x. So when you replace x with 0, everything will be 0. So you don't even need to subtract it because subtracting 0 is, gives you the same thing. So we're just going to plug in 1. So that's going to give us 1 minus 1 fourth plus 1 seventh minus 1 tenth plus dot dot dot. Does that look familiar? Hmm, let's check. What were we trying to find? Oh, this one. Exactly. It's the same one. That's why we picked this integral and we got the result. Well, at least partially, right? Or halfway. Because we still do not know what is going on on the left-hand side, and that's pretty complicated. Let's go ahead and focus on that right now, because what we're trying to solve for is on the left-hand side. Why is it not on the right-hand side? Because this is what we're trying to evaluate, and the answer is right here. So let's go ahead and integrate the x over 1 plus x cubed. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, because, well, from alpha, I can do it for you, but I'm going to show you the method so you can apply it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and start with this, and then we're going to factor the denominator. And this is sum of two cubes. You can factor it like this, right? And of course, you can write it in a slightly nicer way, like x plus 1 and x squared minus x plus 1. x squared minus x plus 1 cannot be factored, so we can leave it like this. So now this is what I have, and I need to do partial fractions. What does that mean? This is kind of like the sum of two fractions whose denominators are this and this. I kind of need to undo it, like make two fractions. The, the whose sum will be this right here, okay? And you can do that by writing this as a over x plus 1. And since this is a quadratic and not, not factorable nicely, we can write our numerator as bx plus c divided by x squared minus x plus 1. Because I need to have a degree difference of 1 between the numerator and denominator. What if a factor is repeated? Like, let's say I have something like x plus 1 to the third power in the denominator. That's a different story. We don't need to worry about it. We don't have any repeating factors. Cool. From here, if you go out and solve for a, b, c, you're going to find them. This is an easy integral. This is ln. And you're going to see that in the results. Because we're from alpha, again, can do the heavy lifting here. This one is a little bit more challenging. But think about this for a minute. Whether you have something like this, in the denominator or numerator I mean this if you differentiate this you get that so this is kind of like u prime divided by u which is of course the derivative of ln u so that's fairly easy but what about the other piece like let's say you get some number d did we use c yeah d divided by this so let's go ahead and talk about this real quick because I really need to show you the results so you can basically write this as x minus one half squared and then you have a one-fourth, you'll have a three-fourths left over. Now, at this point, to integrate this, you can basically replace x minus one-half with root three over two, I'll tell you why, times tangent theta. Now, here's what happens. When you square both sides here, you get three over four. That's why we picked root three over two. In other words, we square rooted this. And then you're going to get 3 over 4 tangent squared, but 1 plus tangent squared after you factor will be secant squared. And then you're going to find dx, which is going to give you the derivative of tangent. Again, that's secant squared, and it's going to become simpler. But why do all the heavy lifting? Because Wolfram Alpha can do it for us. And ta-da-da-da. Good job, Wolfram Alpha. The integral of this expression is the following. Yes, it has some complications, but you can do it. This is ln, by the way. And as you can see, it comes up. And this is another ln, and this is tan inverse, or arc tangent. Get the idea? Hopefully. But once you integrate it and plug in 1 and 0, that's the result you're going to be getting. And ta -da -da -da, this is going to be the answer. In other words, our infinite sum, which is 1 minus 1 fourth plus 1 seventh minus 1 tenth plus dot 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 is equal to this expression right here. It's about 0 0.83. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.